My name is Tawana Bell Wilderness. I'm an associate's degree medical assistant student at Kaplan College. I'm a full-time student as well as a full-time sales clerk. I have a sister that's also in this class with me, but we both go here to Kaplan and hopefully I'll advance to a nursing degree later on. My name is Dana Milholland. I am a student here at Kaplan and I am going to school to be a medical assistant. Hi, welcome. My name is April Flowers and I am a medical assistant instructor at Kaplan College. Today I will be teaching you the fundamentals of a basic vene puncture. Hi, my name is Tanya Tucker. I'm an instructor for Kaplan College and today we're going to be demonstrating on how to do a vena puncture. First of all, we begin with the tubes. Here we have tiger top tubes. These tubes promote clotting. The Vaseline matter you see at the bottom of the tube, you see how identical they are? Because these are the same tube. And what this does, it promotes clotting. And you want the blood to clot so that you can spin it down and get the serum from the blood. This is the old school version versus the new school. They're both identical and you will see both of these out in the field. Just remember, they're the same. Then we have our anticoagulant tube. This tube does not allow the blood to clot. And it has an additive in here that is called EDTA. You get plasma from these tubes, plasma serum. Then we're gonna need the gauze pad I have here, your individually wrapped alcohol swabs, a Band-Aid just in case the patient needs one, your needle, the actual needle holder, your tourniquet, but always be sure to ask the patient if they have a latex allergy because we have these tourniquets in non-latex as well. And that actually goes for the, the gloves. Didn't expect to miss my first patient, but it happens from time to time. No, it's not really difficult. You just have to be confident in yourself, not be afraid, not show fear, and make sure that your patient is comfortable. It was more important, I realized the first few times, to get comfortable holding the needle and placing everything right and not lifting the needle and things like that, figuring out the process. First of all, you need your patient. Hi, Mr. Reed. Hi. And I like to address the patient by their last name because it's more professional, unless you gain that rapport with that patient. Always wash your hands. Always. Yes. You have to make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly with warm water and soap to help prevent contamination. I'm gonna turn on my faucet, grab some soap. I'm gonna create a nice lather. I wanna get rid of all of the unseen microorganisms that you can't see with your naked eye. So you make sure that you get thoroughly in between all fingers. Give it a thorough rinse. When you rinse, rinse with the water running down your hands. Ah, it feels nice and clean. Because you can actually stop the spread of disease by a simple hand washing. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna turn my faucet off with the paper towel because I don't want to recontaminate my, my hands. Fair enough? This area right here, this is the antecubital region, okay? This is the area we're gonna be obtaining the specimen from. First, I'm gonna ask Mr. Reed, my patient, do you have a latex allergy? No. No, always ask because it can create problems. So what you do is you take your tourniquet and you tie it roughly an inch and a half to two inches above the antecubital area. Now when you tie this, you don't want to tie it like a shoe. There's a, a trick to tying it. What you want to do is you want to bring it up. It's elastic so it stretches. And you stretch it as much as you can and cross it just like that. 
With that, you take one of your flaps and stick a portion of it under the cross part right there. So now that it's effectively tied, okay, is that too tight for you? Okay. And then you start to palpate with your index finger, okay? You're gonna start palpating and feeling for a vein. Okay. Usually when you find a vein, it's a spongy surface. And when you find it, it, your finger will basically bounce back once you've located it. If you're not sure if it's a vein or not, you can take your patient's arm, bend it. If it's hard, that means you're on cartilage, not a vein, so you need to find a different site. Right here, we actually have a very good vein right here, so this is where we're gonna go for our specimen. So you remove your tourniquet. The reason you remove your tourniquet is because that can cause hemolysis, which is rupturing of the red blood cells, okay? And that can cause ineffective test results. Make sure you have your equipment assembled before you begin the procedure. I have my needle here. I'm gonna insert it into my adapter. Now I'm ready to go. Okay, here we go. Okay, next I wanna cleanse the site in a circular motion. Why clean it in a circular motion? Because I'm taking all of the germs away from the site. You start from the inside out. Good. Let it dry for a little bit. Now you have to allow your area to dry because if you go and you stick your patient with the alcohol still wet, not only is it gonna cause burning, but it can also cause inaccurate test results. Try your best not to make your patient nervous, because if they're nervous, or if they see that you're nervous, they get nervous. Now I wanna insert the needle with the bevel facing upward, and the lumen is upward as well. That's the eye of the needle, or the opening of the needle. Anchor the skin, okay, which is basically pushing down and pulling, which is grasping the vein so that the vein does not move. I wanna insert the needle I'm gonna get my tube. Okay, angle is important because if you don't do the correct angle, you can actually blow right through a vein. And you use both fingers and you push your needle on and there goes your blood specimen coming into your tube. Make sure the tube is at least halfway full so we can have a, a testable specimen. And you wanna invert it a little bit reason for inverting is to make sure that the chemical in the tube mixes with the blood and so that the blood does not clot. And when the tube is almost halfway full, you want to release the tourniquet. Take your tube out. You want to invert a few times to activate the chemical within. Grab your gauze pad. Don't press down on the needle. Remove it. Apply pressure, release your fist, sir. And you wanna pull your safety up so that you don't make a mistake and accidentally stick yourself. And I toss it into my sharps container. You have to make sure that your patient has stopped bleeding. And you do this by applying pressure around the site where you completed your venipuncture. Nothing comes up. Now I have a bandage that's already open. And I'm gonna apply it onto the site. Instruct your patient not to lift anything heavy for at least a half an hour to an hour. Do not do frequent bending of the arm because bending causes bruising. And if your patient does use this arm um, strenuously within that time, it is a strong possibility that your patient can actually start bleeding out.
Do your best. I mean, you're not going to always get it every single time but do your best to try to make that patient as comfortable as possible. Explain what it is that you're doing to the patient in terms that they can understand. You've just seen how to do a basic venipuncture procedure. Just remember these key elements. Always check the doctor's orders, greet the patient, wash your hands before the procedure, clean the site in a circular motion, Always make sure that you have your equipment assembled prior to the actual procedure. Ask the patient if they have a latex allergy. Never leave the tourniquet on for longer than 60 seconds. Always discard your needle in the sharps container. Relax, take your time, and pay attention to what it is your instructor's telling you to do. Believe that you can obtain and do the procedure and go for it. As long as you go through all the steps and you know them comfortably, you should be fine. The worst you're going to do, if you know all that, is miss. And that's, I mean, it's, you just didn't get it. But you're not hurting anybody, you didn't contaminate anything, you're not doing anything wrong, you just miss. I understand that you're nervous and this is your first time, but you will develop your skill with time. You come to class every day and get the practice that you need. Just remember, always be professional, show your knowledge and your skill, and you'll be awesome. I'm really looking forward to seeing you out in the field. Sometimes you miss, sometimes you're successful, but you just gotta keep trying. Practice makes perfect. <laughs>